How do the foothills of Southern Alberta inspire author Sophie Stocking? Today on All About Books, we are going to ask her. But before we do, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so you can keep up to date with the latest author interviews and behind the book stories. Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. I'm really excited because today's guest is Sophie Stocking. Sophie has a very diverse career, social work, architecture, and motherhood. She has pursued fiction at Alexandra Writers' Centre and at the University of Calgary. Today, we'll be chatting about Sophie's collection of short stories, Walking Leonard and Other Stories. Her book was published by Guernica Editions, and here's what it's about. Walking Leonard and Other Stories depict unspoken pivotal points in the lives of ordinary people. Themes include responsibility and violations between parent and child, nature as a protective force, and the shucking off of various selves in the process of a lifetime. Sophie Stocking, welcome to All About Canadian Books. Hi, Crystal. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm delighted that you're here. So, Sophie, you have said that in terms of encompassing everything, like your short stories kind of fit the bill. Can you explain what you mean by this? Um, yeah, I had a very convoluted career path. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember being in university, I, I was there for five years doing my undergrad because I couldn't decide on a, on a major um, mm -hmm. because everything seemed too specific. Um, and I had this nagging sense that um, I wanted something that could wrap around all of experience mm -hmm. somehow. Um, so I thought psychology, well, that was sort of getting there. Um, political science, maybe religious studies, um, botany, not enough. <laughs> and <laughs> um, and I, I ended up doing psychology, um, but, but that doesn't wrap around everything that wraps around human experiences. Um, and, but stories can wrap around everything. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love that. And I'm always fascinated by, you know, the stories behind the book and what inspires people. And I understand that the foothills of Southern Alberta and also um, a historic neighborhood. And I'm sorry, I'm not from Calgary, but Bownus. Is that how I pronounce it? Bownus? Bonus. Bonus. Oh, excuse me. Bonus. Bonus. Is, Bonus. This, is the source of your inspiration. Um, what is it about these places that inspires you? Um, I don't know. I'm afraid I'm kind of a Bilbo Baggins. You know, I, um, I hope, <laughs> I, I, think, I think I might write about other places sometime in the future, but I, I need to know a place um, in depth um, the nature, the history, mm -hmm. the light, the animals, like um, nature and animals figure in my fiction a lot. They come in and out of these people's lives. Um, yes. um, and I know this, I grew up in this place. I um, know it so intimately. I know the history and it's, it's a very interesting little funny, um, it's a town within the city. It was its own little town and then Calgary grew around it and engulfed it and um, it's, triangular and bounded on two sides by the Bow River and then um, the highway and it's intersected by the railway track and um, it's just a it has a really interesting history of both being a place where people from Calgary used to come to get away for holidays mm -hmm. um, it was full of weird places like uh, getaway holiday places called things like Shangri-La and Happy Valley um, but they also put in Bonas, the things they didn't want to look at. So like um, mm -hmm. a sanatorium for TB and a home for difficult children. And so it's both, uh, yeah, it's a way um, and also places, things we don't want to look at. So it has a lot of grit, I would say socially. <laughs> and it's, um, but it's a very beautiful, lots of nature, a very interesting place. Anyhow, I, I love it uh, in probably excessively. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you go walking every day? by the river 
I, yes, every day I have to walk my bad dogs. And then I, I've also taken up running. So um, I have lots of wonderful places to run. So. Oh, good. Good for you. <laughs> now your collection, Sophie, you've got nine stories. Um, of your stories, is there any one in particular that really resonates with you? Um, no, I like they all came from really big um, issues that I've looked at in my life. So they're all important to me. Um, I might be right. The, the latest story is always the one that's most strong for me. So um, Bobcat was the last one I wrote. So Right. Yeah. And and, and when you're writing um, with short stories, do you finish one or do you have a couple on the go or how does that work for you? No, I'm totally consumed by one story at a time and yeah. I can't think of anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Not so much with novels. Novels, I sort of have sometimes two on a go at a go. But. Yeah. Okay. Um, and when you're writing these stories or, or a book, what is it? that you discover about yourself in the process? Um, that it's not just me, you know, um, that you sort of hook into, uh, I don't know where lots of ideas, it's so subconscious where ideas show up. Yeah. So that's so exciting and magical um, when that, that happens. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't, I have a rough idea of plot and then things happen. Mm -hmm. So, I discover it's not really about me. Yeah. <laughs> and are you someone, do you, do you jot your ideas down in a, in a, in a journal book or do you just, once it happens, you're, you're, you're gone for good <laughs> until it's done. I tend to, I'm quite plot driven. So I tend to get a, a plot. Um, so the sort of the major structure of the action and um, that's the sort of a snapshot and um I, I do have, yeah, all sorts of bits of paper and uh, yeah. little notebooks all over the bloody place with <laughs> yeah. little bits of ideas in them. And then I lose them and forget about them. And, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> and then you go for another walk and something else will hit you. <laughs> now, um, Sophie, what are you currently working on? I'm working on a novel that I've been working on for years and years, um, and I need to finish it this month it's um, called, the working title is Cleave Me. And it's about uh, the midlife crisis of a, a housewife. Um, and it has a kind of a fantasy element as my previous novel, my first novel, Corridor Nine also had a fantasy element mm -hmm. um, mixed into sort of very realistic literary fiction. Um, and it's about this woman who, um, it seems that her marriage is on the skids and um, her kids are leaving and she she sort of dropped the ball on career and um, and she she meets up with somebody her someone herself had she made a different choice. Um, I, I, I love that whole concept of like how a, a choice can take you to one direction or yeah. <laughs> the slide yeah, yeah choices and then they just roll out right like yes there you go. <laughs> Ooh, and I'm, I'm intrigued and I also really love that title too <laughs> thank you and a friend of mine discovered that um cleave is one of those strange words that has opposite meanings um she told me the name of a word like that I forget what it is a palindrome no um it means to join together or to tear apart simultaneously so it means to cleave asunder or um, what is the other meaning to um, to cleave asunder or to, you know, so it's to join together or yeah. to rip. Apart. Yeah. Which is very much. I'm like, oh, my God. Anyhow, <laughs> I was very excited. <laughs> yeah, I'm on. I'm so on right now. <laughs> That's yeah. great. That's great. Well, I will look forward to that. So you said you're finishing that this month is your deadline. Yeah, damn it. I have to finish it. Yeah. Yes, you've said it out loud now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. We're all going to follow up with you. <laughs> well, so Sophie, one of my favorite things also to ask writers is if they had a piece of advice for for writers, new writers, what would it be? Um, it would be um, 
to ignore some advice out there. Uh, one being <laughs> write daily or um, read voraciously because I think a lot of people, I remember someone said to me at one point when I said, I think I wanna be a writer. And she said, well, writers write, Sophie, and I don't see you writing. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people's lives um, are so difficult, so crowded with responsibilities that to write daily would be very difficult. So, um, but another friend said to me, Sophie, I know you're a writer because I've read what you write. Mm -hmm. So um, my advice would be to just write any way you can in cars, in you know weekends when the kids go away fishing, right in bits and bobs and bursts, mm -hmm. but just refuse to give up on your project. That would be my advice. I like that. I like that. Don't give up on your project. Yeah. Just don't let it die. Yeah. And lastly, Sophie, um, if you could read an excerpt from one of your short stories, that would be fabulous. And if you could tell us why you've chosen to read this particular story. Okay, well, it, um, here, here's the cover. Um, yep. I love the cover. Um, I know, there's Leonard. <laughs> <laughs> it's this the story is called 33rd Street. And this little excerpt, um, just fits nicely into two minutes and is a little bit zippy. So, <laughs> and it'll, <laughs> and it'll, it'll, it'll give everyone a lovely uh, sense of how beautiful your writing is, too. So, this is perfect. Well, I hope so. <laughs> this one's a little funny, I think. This story is called 33rd Street. Her rule for the to do list is the hardest thing first. So, mm -hmm informing the school that Rilla contracted head lice that one time, or purging the basement laundry room after the sewer backup, or mundane horrors like organizing all the paperwork at tax time. But now that the twins have started grade one and she finally has time, the hardest thing is simply to begin, to walk into her garage studio and get the damn brush on the canvas. Today is such a day, but when she does, Mariah finds a dead cat lying on the concrete floor. The way it reclines for a weird moment reminds her of her nude modeling days as an art student in college. She shrieks and jumps back, clutching her plaid flannel painting shirt around her. The cat lying in a patch of sunlight is so clearly not sleeping. Its body contorts backwards in an acute arch and the lips pull away in a grimace. Watery vomit lies in a puddle beside its head. Oh my God, Mariah says, I don't own a cat, and her eyes scan wildly. The north facing window stands open, left that way to air out the studio after she'd cleaned the brushes with turpentine last night. The cat is massive, black with white paws and a white bib extending up its throat and over the top lip of his jowls. The white upper lip, the long white whiskers, the little black goatee on his chin, and then the sheer size of, size of him make him unmistakable. Louise's cat, Stash. Louise lives across the street in a tiny stucco bungalow behind a high manicured hedge. She is 92. This four block stretch of 33rd Street resonates with that hedge, manicured, immaculate, and populated thickly with retirees. Mariah and Liam's place, a blazingly white Victorian row house they recently acquired when the Edelsons moved to assisted living, has exploded at the hands of their three children. A trampoline and skateboards, bikes, chalk drawings all over the sidewalk, dandelions, and strange modernist sculptures in the front yard. She sinks to her knees and examines him. She sees swirls of color in the cat's vomit, barium yellow, cobalt violet, a swipe of shields green on Max's white bib. The pads of his paws show violet and yellow and red. A trail of smudged footprints leads from her palette on the counter down and across the floor. He must have licked the paint on his paws and poisoned himself in the night while they slept. As if the chaos of their yard isn't enough, now she is responsible for poisoning the venerable cat of the street's oldest resident. That's good. <laughs> you could just picture <laughs> that happening. <laughs> so you have to read Waking Leonard and other stories to find out <laughs> how this goes. 
How guilty is this woman? Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So Sophie Stocking, a great big thank you for being a guest on All About Canadian Books today. It was such a pleasure to meet you and to read your collection of short stories. Thank you so much, Crystal. This is such an important uh, forum. Thank you for creating it. It's, it's really wonderful. Oh, thank you. That's very kind. And to all our viewers out there, thank you so much for watching. I will put links down below in the description box with links to Sophie's website and also to Guernica's website so you can purchase a copy of her book. Thank you for watching.